Good morning. If you guys are receiving this, um, you're per, one of the people I actually revalue your opinion and I would love to have some feedback on, on what I've already put out to you guys. What this is is essentially a test drive and kind of a conceptual framework of what I want to do from our programming lecture in terms of training camps. Um, again, this is kind of how I've been programming and training and developing my training over the years. And what it is is a, uh, it's kind of an amalgam of 10 years of training and doing CrossFit. And if you guys have feedback, I would I'd much appreciate it. Uh, if I could order it more logically, set the board up differently, whatever it is for you guys. First thing I wanna talk about the very basic levels is the intro to what we do. And what it is is a GPP program plus. And what that means is, is the general physical preparedness program is something that was put up by the Russians some years ago. And basically everybody's adopted it. That's what CrossFit is. That's what any kind of strength, preseason strength and conditioning is. It's essentially a general physical preparedness program. That being said, if, if you are um, just training generally to be generally fit, you're probably in some sort of a GPP program, more or less. That is the core of the whole program. And essentially what you want to think about is, is as you, that's what we talk about in CrossFit level ones is constantly varied function movements at high intensity, uh, not stealing anybody else's thunder, but there it is, it, what it, it is. And I think CrossFit probably got the best working definition of a GPP program out of anybody out there. And then we have different vectors, what I consider vectors of training. In other words, areas where it's like, okay, GPP is the core of the program. Then there's some of these other accessory pieces, if you want to call it that. I hate the word accessory because they're just as essential as the GPP piece. However, um, they, the, everything revolves around the GPP program. So whether you're a games athlete, winning the CrossFit Games, you need GPP. Whether you're a grandmother just starting out doing fitness, you need GPP. If, if you're at any stage of development, you need GPP. Then we call it what I call basic strength. What this is our simple gross barbell lifts would be deadlift, back squat, front squat, overhead squat, back squat, front squat, overhead squat, and deadlift, and some sort of a pressing, whether it be a bench press or whether it be a, uh, a, a, a shoulder press. Those are things. Think about pulling something off the ground, think of pressing something over your head, think of lowering your center of mass with some weight. Those things are absolutely essential just to getting stronger. The next thing is what I would call gross conditioning. This, are, this is your sleds, this is your butchers, uh, these are your um, sprint interval type stuff. It's just general conditioning. All it is is there to, you know, essentially if you get hurt pushing a butcher, you probably um, have some sort of pre-existing something going on because the characteristic of those, and I'll talk about those in a second, um, each one of these has a characteristic, but I want to lay down the groundwork what they kind of look like. Gymnastics. Now I want you to think about gymnastics in terms of body awareness and body movements. Um, being inverted, being on your hands, being able to do muscle ups, being able to do bar muscle ups, pull ups, all of that stuff is going to be rooted around one thing, is a pull up and a dip. If you can pull your body up and you can lower your body center of mass with your shoulders, guess what? Those are the basic elements of it. And what, when I look at it is, is I think of as basic elements in gymnastics would be a pull up and a dip, a muscle up and a handstand push up. Essentially everything else, some of the tumbling stuff would be nice to add, but there's a, you know, obviously there's a whole bunch of constraints in, in, in doing that. One, you need all the safety equipment to do it. Second of all, um, I'm not qualified to do that at all. At all. Weightlifting. This is your snatch, clean and jerk, and all the variants thereof. There are three general movements. There's a snatch and a clean and jerk. Snatch, power snatch, pause snatch, hang snatch, billion and one things you can do with that. That covers all of the weightlifting, all the weightlifting, and how to uh, systematically train those things. What I base the training off of is obviously some old school Russian stuff, again, it's sold from Louis Simmons and, and some of the, the Russian GPP stuff is a 21 day training cycle with a one week deload. And I want you to, let me, let me explain deload from my perspective. Three week cycle of, imagine you're gonna vary the loading, you're gonna vary the intensities. Loading and intensity are roughly the same, so basically as you increase load, you're increasing your intensity because the, the weight's there. If you're increasing the reps, then uh, your also intensity is there. 
three weeks. So like for instance, I'll talk about basic strength. Back squat, first week, you're gonna do a five by five. What you wanna do as heavy as possible as long as you maintain good technique. Everything is based off a of decent technique. If you have horrible technique, you're going to get hurt. It's not an, an F, it's a when, and it's probably sooner than later. Don't do that. So first week, five by fives. So you'll see volume in terms of the weights lifted be 25 reps times five movements, which would be 125 reps. Uh, you think about that in terms of weightlifting, like a lot of high level weightlifters will be pulling 300 reps or so over 70 or 80% of their one rep max in a, in a given week, um, depending on the phase of their training, but understand that that's what we're talking about volume. Volume in terms of central nervous system, volume in terms of conditioning and repetitive use, it's a different animal, but understand is that as far as your central nervous system is concerned, if you really put yourself under a lot of heavy load a lot of times, then you're gonna end up with all of the issues you run into with the CNS failures. Deload. What does deload mean? It's from my perspective, it is going to be not really any weightlifting. In other words, if you're gonna do a barbell complex at T25 and one of the movements is a jerk and your max jerk is 300 pounds, what is percentage of that, of your one rep max is that? It's pretty light, it's pretty small. So understand is that most of those things are done for conditioning. So you'll see a variance in conditioning, you'll still need to do conditioning or your GPP, but that does not go, but the lifting stuff goes away. You may see in the, in the off, uh, off week, uh, a deload, you'll see gross conditioning. And I think that's, that's something that's just basically general Metcon, push something heavy, pull something heavy. That stuff isn't super fatiguing as far as your central nervous system is concerned. Weightlifting, very fatiguing. Heavy lifting and strength cycles, very fatiguing. You guys no nods on that? Good thumbs up. Okay, three weeks, one week deload. Let's talk about the characteristics of each of the pieces. GPP, constantly varied functional movements, high intensity. How much, how much variance, how much intensity, how much um, is dependent on what you're gonna do programming wise. Like for instance, if you're gonna do five Frans and you're gonna do it at 75 versus 65 versus 55 pounds, you're gonna see a very, very different, different outcome as far as intensity level goes. In other words, the ability to finish the workouts within the three minute time gap. Those are gonna be varied and that's just gonna go along with the regular program you'd see. That's you know um, gymnastics, weightlifting, and uh, monostructural training. Let's talk about characteristics of our basic strength program. What I want to see is this, is that we have, I have a long cycle, a long viewpoint on, in terms of our strength cycle. What that means is, is that you're going to get stronger quicker because you're going to be getting, getting underneath the bar, you're going to be doing a lot of, of training. What I want you to think of is making small incremental gains in loading. If you're on a two year strength cycle, versus a six month or a six week string cycle, very different animals, very, very different animals. If you get 20% stronger, let's say your lips go up by 20% in six weeks, what hasn't happened is your connective tissue has not kept up with it. And what happens is that you people with soreness and itises and all kinds of just debilitating crap, which isn't necessarily what you wanna have. I'm gonna go on a limb there. So slow progression, so if you're going to do a 5x5 five five in the first week, a 5x3 in the second week, a 5x2 in the third week, then you're going to deload, guess what? Your progression should be no more than 5, possibly a 10 pound PR in any given cycle. So in other words, your, your back squat goes from 100 pounds to 100, 105 pounds, thumbs up. Goes 110, uh, pretty good. If it goes to 125, which you can lift, guess what? You probably should have stayed at 110, and so the next cycle you get some more volume in. Is that, under, is that understandable for you guys? No, I'm asking a question in a totally rhetorical sense because you guys cannot answer right now because I'm talking to the camera. <sighs> Gross conditioning. Sleds, pull something, push something, carry things, farmers carry. Then I'm gonna add sprints this, uh, this next cycle. In other words, one day of just basically just sprinting. Um, sprinting with various distances, whether it be 100, 200, 50, 400, 800. 800 is a sprint. Not really, but it takes me a fucking calendar day. Needless to say, 
those will be varying the time domain. So basically you'll see a lot of AMRAPs of that. Just get some work done. And what it's meant to be is you're at 90 or 87%. 87% um, intensity level, not quite 100%. Part of it is if you go to 100% intensity level on everything all the time, you will destroy yourself eventually. But there's a good chunk of the training that needs to be done at 100% intensity, most of your high, high level Metcons, your weightlifting pieces, but guess what? Some of the gross conditioning stuff should be done at sub-maximal intensities. Then it happens automatically because you're gonna push a 200 pound butcher and then you're gonna run 50 yards. Chances are you're not sprinting the 50. Just chances. Basic skills. We talked a little bit about that. Handstand push up, uh, pull up, push or uh, pull up, dip, and muscle up, and all the variants thereof. So in other words, I'll be cycled through, and I'll talk a little bit more how they cycle through. Weightlifting skills. Weightlifting. Um, People, again, progress too quickly in weightlifting. They'll want to see a five pound PR or a 10 pound PR. When you're at your max lift, you shouldn't be going up by more than a kilo. That's 2.2 pounds. Maybe that's why we have one quarter weights in the gym, maybe. Or even fractional plates. They're smaller, they're cute. What I want you to think of is, is mastering the skills. In other words, the positions, master position one, master position two, master the movements before you start to really increase loads. What that means is, is that you're gonna see a lot of reps at 70% or 75% or 80%. You'll see 20 or 30 reps. And the idea is accumulate volume so that you, your technique will get dialed in. Now, there's some argument plus or minus on that, but it's kind of one of the ways that I, I do it because you're lifting for CrossFit. You're not lifting to become Olympic weightlifters. You're lifting to do, be Olympic weightlifters. This is not what you're going to do. Am I clear? Okay. Now let's talk about a rotational template. And this is something that I'd come up with. It's like, okay, one of the CrossFit games, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. One of the regionals, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Um, CrossFit games will be something on a Wednesday, but you know, that's usually on the training scheme. So what I want you to think of is, is this is the days that you're training. Now, there is this thing called reality. Three on, one off is the only way to do it. Five on, two off is the only way to do it. This is not the only way to do it. And I told one of my guys as a police officer on the West Coast, said, hey, try and follow this template as best you can with your work schedule. And it'll change some. And some of that variance piece for him makes it a little bit different, but a little bit better. But Sunday's a work day. Monday's active rest, Tuesday, Wednesday is a work day, Thursday's active rest, Friday, Saturday work days. So you'll end up with three on, one off, two on, one off. So you can maintain some intensities, maintain your intensity levels without getting too banged up. So you're never going more than three days at a time. Shouldn't be. Active rests. Um, I know that when I first started doing it, probably five years ago, it's okay guys, 10K row is an active rest. Nowadays, it is an active rest if you do it you know, regularly. If, you do, if, you get, if you're a good runner and you have good running technique, a 10K run is a, an active rest. You run a you know, nice little conversational pace for 10K. Some people are, it'll never be me, but guess what? That'll be something you guys can, can pick up on and you guys can do. Active rest, 10K. And then the other thing is, is that with, what goes with all of these is the body maintenance piece. On your active rest day, you row 10K, let's call it an hour, 15 minutes, 48 minutes. Some people are really fast, very, very patient people. Spend an hour to 45 minutes hitting every joint of your body, every big clump of muscle tissue you have with a foam roller, a flossing band, whatever your, your, your medicine of choice is for you, and make sure you, you, you touch on everything. Don't just fall, you know, focus on the areas that you're sore in. Um, if your shoulders are sore, people tend to focus on those. Appeal is, you have to focus on the entire system, the entire system, how you react to the ground and how that, that reverberates up your body. That's important, so you need to hit every single piece. Start from the bottom of your feet and work your way all the way up to the top of your head. Try not to floss your necks. Results are poor. Okay, this is something I haven't shared. This is how I kind of came up with, so I don't fuck it up. Essentially, what I do is I have general, general lifting pieces or general skill pieces, and they all have 
generic labels. Like for instance, we do handstand push-ups twice a week, we do pull up and dip complex twice a week, and we practice muscle ups once a week. Now, the thought process is you're getting a lot of dips and pull ups on your pull up and dips, you're gonna get stronger and better at those. And then you're gonna practice your handstand push ups where if your technique is faulty, you can work on your technique as a skill set, or you can actually start to condition yourself as far as developing strict handstand push ups and then building in all your kips. Same thing for the muscle ups. Now, I want you to think about this if A and C, let me, let me do weightlifting because like, the redundancy of having two handstand push ups. It's a little different because you'll basically have to talk about variance in a second. Let's say A is back squat, B is deadlift, C is front squat, D is press of some sort, pr bench press or press overhead, and then E is an overhead squat. Week one, training cycle. And I put out five weeks in this, but it carries continuously. That's how I get a whole year in advance of training. So you do all your five by fives. Your task is five by five. Week two, five by threes. So it's one, two, it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12 days before you see back squat again. So it is the planned procedure I use so you don't do so much of the same thing all the time. I know that we squat all the time. Front squat's different than a back squat. Back squat's different than overhead squat. All these are different. There's a slightly different stimulus. And you think about the conjugate method that, that Louis Simmons talks about, they just change bars. They just simply change them to do a, uh, do a uh, camber bar, safety bar, you know, bent bar, you know, all these different things that change the limit, stimulus slightly so that your body keeps adapting. This is kind of how I kind of, I planned to have the variance in there without having an overload of it. Now, for instance, you're doing a five by five this day, a five by three the next one, and then some odd days after that, let's call this one, two, three, four, five, six day after, you're then doing, guess what? A back squat at five by two. And then you'll go a good chunk of time and then the next week. So wait, it'll cycle. Now think about this in terms of tasking. This is a sled drag, this is a butcher, this is a sprint, this is a yoke carry, and this is a handle carry. However it is, however I kind of come up with what I think are, are reasonable ways of, of cycling through it. Your body will adapt if it's constantly stimulated. If it's constantly stimulated with the exact same stimulus, it will stop adapting. You will have law of diminishing returns, it applies to a lot of stuff. Understand is that what I want you to think of is that how I rotationally change these pieces. Now, back squats, pretty straightforward. Next part of it, it's called handstand push up this day. Pull up dip complex, which is pretty routine. They want you guys continue adding loads or adding reps, so it's going to change the variance. Let's call this muscle up. Let's call this hands, or, uh, let's call this pull up and dip. Let's call this muscle up. So, you might see accumulate on A, off a day, A day. You may see, you know, accumulate 20 or 15 or 10 or whatever it is, strict handstand push ups. Accumulate for completion. For completion. What for completion means is, is that if it takes you all day to get 10 handstand push ups, it takes you all day. Strict. On C day, on C day, you might see strict, one strict, two kip, short kip three long kip, and you, if you can accumulate five rounds of that. So if you can get on the wall and cycle through all of those. So now we have variance in terms of the tasking, not in the base unit. In other words, it's all a variety, a variety of handstand pushup. It may be a deficit, it may be a kip, it may be a long kip, maybe short kip, maybe something else, or maybe just be simply shoulder touches for, for hand walking, because I, I kind of uh, encompass hand walking into the handstand pushups. In this way, that we are constantly running through this template, so we're, one, we're, we're having planned variants, and you have uh, systematic exposure to all the different training modalities. I think I just beat that dead horse pretty well. Okay, next part of this is that how I would explain to new people how to join the programming. This is a major issue for people who come in. They come in and they go, oh my God, I have to do all this in one day. And they come in, they're good for about three weeks, and then they just crash and burn and they die. Or not really die, because dying would end the suffering would be a good thing. 
maybe. I don't know. Whatever. How to join the programming. How to join the programming. Phase one. Athlete should GPP. This thing. The GPP and the basic strength are usually combined into one piece. A lot of times you'll see the weightlifting first, then you'll see the, the metabolic conditioning session, Metcon, and then you'll see a time where the Metcon is before the weightlifting, and so we'll use that as another piece of the variance. So if they spend a full cycle just doing this, thumbs up, survivability is probably pretty good. GPP program, somebody wants to train for the games, getting really fit. Phase two, been debating internally on this and I'm still not entirely sold myself on it yet. I'll think about it more and try. But I think this is the next piece to add on it will be the gross conditioning. And the reason is, is that one is your training capacity to do just general work. The more capacity you have to do general work, the easier it is when we add other pieces. Next piece is add gymnastics, add the gymnastics pieces. Start doing the pull-up and dip complex, start working on the handstand uh, development, and start working on muscle-up development. And in terms of muscle-ups, in terms of doing strict... That. The last piece is to add the weightlifting. So this is month one, month two, month three, month four. At the end of four months, you'll have added all of these pieces. Now at that point, in my opinion, you are ready to train. You're ready to train. So you've gone through four months of training. Now you're ready to start working for a full-on CrossFit Games level training. And uh, I call it phase five, regular training, where you, can, you have the physical capacity to be able to do an entire day of the training. So when we get to the CrossFit Games, the idea is to develop the capacity so that when we get to the CrossFit Games or the highest level of whatever our fitness demands, at the end of day three, I want you, at the beginning of day three, I want you to wake up and go, I'm a little sore, I'm a little tired, but you know what? This is less volume than we've been doing. Volume in terms of what we've been doing totally, um, as far as soreness, all that stuff, I want it to be, I want you to be as fresh as possible the last day. Um, that's pretty much all I got. I don't know how long, I forgot to time it, so I'll check when I download the video. What I would like you guys to do is if you guys can spare a few moments and finish watching this video, any kind of comments on terms of, in terms of organization, what have you. Um, this is my first run through and this is the only time I've ever done this other than when I did Maximus. And so this is kind of brand newish to me and to you and to you. And hopefully maybe some of you guys have been doing the training for a while now understand what we're doing and why we're doing it. Thumbs up. I'd say Coach's Corner, but this is not going to make it to Coach's Corner. This is DCHAP coming from the test lab. Boom.